This is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321 and in today's video I'm taking a look at the pens that I currently have inked up. Now this is more pens than usual for me because I'm trying to do more long-term testing of the inks that I use in my writing samples and a lot of these are carryovers from the previous currently inked pens. I did clean out the Pilot Metropolitan because I was wanting to use this cursive fine nib in another pen. And I just love this Pilot Cursive Fine. Now, it's just marked fine, but there's no tipping. And you can see it is a stub nib. This is the nib that came in my Pilot Pluminix. And the Pilot Pluminix is the only pen that I've been able to find this particular nib on. Um, I've thought about picking up another one just to have a spare so that I wouldn't have to do things like empty out a pen and ink that I'm, I'm enjoying using to because I'm wanting to use it in another pen. But I've seen some on eBay and I don't know. I can probably get by with just one of them. But I was wanting to put this cursive fine nib in my Pen BBS 494. And I did. I tested the ink that I was going to use. I wanted to use Sailor Ink Studio 143 and I tested it with the calligraphy fine nib and it worked great felt nice and smooth and so I swapped out nibs with my 494 and it was just a joy to write with so I was writing with it and then it would go dry and I would prime it again dip it in some ink get it going again and it would go dry I could not figure out what was going on apparently my Pilot nibs are not an exact fit for this feed, even though it looks like a Pilot feed. I don't know, and maybe it's just that particular nib, but when I checked, the nib did not seat exactly on the feed. There was a gap between the two. And I had used, I don't know if it was that particular Pilot nib, but I've used Pilot nibs on this pen before. I don't know if those other nibs just fit the feed better or whatever ink I was using, it wasn't as prone to um, that that issue that it was a little bit more forgiving if the nib and feed didn't fit exactly, but it wasn't going to work, so I emptied the ink back into the vial, replaced the nibs, and so I'm using Sailor 143 in my Twisby Mini, and it has been working great for the past two weeks. Um, the reason initially that I wanted to use this pen is because I got a Filofax clipbook and I thought that blue with the Sailor 143 just looked great together and it does. But now, just yesterday, I started having issues with the nib drying out. I would just be going along writing beautifully. It starts drying up and then stops. Kind of like the issue I had with the Pen BBS 143, but I checked. There's no problems with the nib and feed. They appear to be fitting together correctly as usual. I don't know what the issue is and it's not like there's a bubble down here that I can tell keeping the ink away from the feed. Seems to be nice and flowy. I don't know. I'm going to have to see what's up. I hope I don't have to uh, give up on this pen and ink combo because I'm really liking it. I'll do a writing sample with it in just a minute. The last time I wrote with it, it was writing okay, but it just takes a second for it to dry up and quit writing. Another pen that I inked up is another Pilot 78G. This one has Noodler's Red Black in it, and it has also been a joy to use. It's a medium nib. I'll do a writing sample with it. Red Black is a little bit drier than Noodler's Navy. Noodler's Navy is just smooth as butter. It's very wet, takes a little while to dry, but oh, very smooth. Now, I've also, let's see, I've got the Noodler's Navy and the Pilot E95S. It looks like KWZ Honey has gotten darker in that pen over time, and it's kind of settled into this color right here. 
it was a little bit lighter when I first put it in the pen but I've noticed that I'm getting some crusties on the nib down here in the corner and it's been there for a while it doesn't seem to be getting worse or at least it's not getting worse very quickly and with it being down here it's not interfering with the ink flowing in the nib it still just writes beautifully and I think the reason it's I'm getting crusties there is because I have it sitting on my desk and you can see all of them the clips are to the left and that's how this one is and so it's getting a little crusty but not hardly even noticeable and not interfering with how the pen works I've been journaling with these a little a little bit because I've got so many inked up. I might have one or two journal entries with each one. I wrote a birthday card with the Preppy and Momiji. Mm, I'm still just loving that. I got a new pen on my trip to Van Ness the other day. Me and my sister took another trip to Van Ness, so I'll do a writing sample with that. So I've got three pens that I'm going to do writing samples with. And I also cleaned out my Pilot Grants that had the vertigris in it. All of these have been just a joy to write with. Not really any issues other than with the Twisby that I'm going to try right now. I'm going to start with the Twisby Mini. It's got a stainless steel fine nib. Nice and smooth. Writing nice so far, a little bit dry, but feels pleasant. And this is let's see, it feels like it might be getting a little drier. Oh, hold on. There we go. And I don't know what the deal is there. I don't know why it's doing it because it was writing so beautifully up there. I don't know what's causing it to lose, lose its prime. And that's a disappointment because this ink looks so good with the pen and with my notebook. Next, I've got a Pilot 78G. This one has the stamped nib, so it's a 78G Plus, and it's a stainless steel medium nib. Nice and smooth. I said it was a 78G Plus. The stamped nibs are the older ones, which is just the 78G. And this is a medium nib. Not super wet, but still very smooth. Maybe there's red, black. Now I'm writing decently slow. Let me see how it's going to be able to keep up. Like when I'm journaling, I'm just going at a leisurely pace. Yeah, it does look like it's able to keep up. Alright, yeah, that's been a nice pen and ink combo. They look good together. This pen is not a bright red. It's just a nice subdued red, a good match for this red-black. And finally, my pen I picked up at Vaness this week is a Bexley Sleeve Filler. Now, I'll probably end up doing another video on this to go into more detail of all the, the features of this pen, but a lot of the features of this pen are not characteristic 
of my typical type of pen that I enjoy writing with, but I've enjoyed writing with this for the past few days. I had to do some work on the nib, and I'll go into what all I had to do at a later date, but basically it had some pretty severe baby's bottom or over-polishing of the nib. It has, it has an 18 karat, let me zoom in a little bit, an 18 karat stub nib, and I've got it inked up with Tokiwamatsu. Just a little, just the barest hint of a hard start. And 18K stub. The line width is very similar to the stub nib that I originally got on my Pilot Pereira that I now kind of swap back and forth on my various Pilot pens. It's basically a, a 1.0 millimeter stub and normally that's a little bit on the broad side for me. But this is such a wet writer. Look at that. It's just been fun to write with, especially this Tokiwamatsu, the nice sheen that you get when you put down a lot of ink. The reverse writing is just a little bit drier. Just slightly drier. Let's see. Yeah. A decent amount drier and just the tiniest bit less wide, so that's regular and that's reverse. So you can write a tiny bit smaller, and that has already come in handy. Um, I don't really journal with this. I like to write quotes, that's one thing I've done with it so far copying quotes. Uh, copying Bible scriptures, Bible verses. Uh, this is going to be fun to write a letter with. I've already tested it on the letter that I use, or on the paper that I use for letter writing. Oh, and it just looks so good, and it's a pleasure to write with. And it was new old stock. I think these were made in 2001 from what I can tell and they tested it there in the store and the ink sac had lost its elasticity so while I waited Mike from Mike Van Ness changed the sack in it and I'll kind of go into it a little bit more when I make a video just about this pen but this pen is easy to disassemble you just just like a cartridge converter pen the section just screws off, and I, I feel like if I ever need to replace the sack, that's something I would be able to do myself, but I don't know if the lighting's not the best here, but this is the camouflage finish, and it's got kind of army green or olive green and um, kind of a dark red almost like this red black chunks and matte black not really matte black but just uh, opaque black and some of the olive green and the red pieces are kind of pearlescent so I'm enjoying my new pen not a practical pen but um, a fun pen all right if you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.